Hi there, I'm Mike Rembus, and I saw a UFO. I call it a UFO because it was up in the air, and I don't know how else to identify it. I think it was flying, so it was either an unidentified flying object or an unidentified floating object. So I'm going to show you uh, some pictures of what I saw. I was out in my yard. Uh, trying to take a picture of Venus with the moon because it was a really beautiful night. It was March 28th. And uh, I don't usually take pictures at night or of uh, Venus and the moon and stuff like that. So I got out there and uh, got this picture that is of Venus. Okay. So first I'm looking at Venus and it looks real nice and I'm trying to zoom and uh, I, I did my best zooming in. But while I was doing that, I got some other pictures of another object that was up in the sky. So if you look over there on the left of the picture, you'll see uh, another uh, bright thing. Turns out that um, I thought it was a star cluster. And because I don't have great eyesight to begin with, and I'm looking through a camera and I'm squinting at night, um, I said, oh man, I'll get a picture of that star cluster. That'll look fantastic. So I went and I took pictures. I focused directly on the star cluster. But it's not a star cluster. It's something up in the air that was, uh, well, not a star cluster. It's created by somebody. So I don't know who created it. And I looked at other pictures of drones online, and it doesn't look like a drone to me. But I want you to see here, the Goodyear blimp is 60 feet tall, 50 feet wide, and 192 feet across. So, and the gondola, I don't know, what is that, 30, 40 feet, 50 feet? Does that look like a gondola for a Goodyear blimp that doesn't have any other lights on it? Doesn't look like it to me. Um, because, you know, here's picture one, uh, the, fir the first one where we see it really good through the trees. Right after I take the moon shots is... Uh, 67 68 I blow that up you see they're purple and it's got some uh, green edges to it it's it's really kind of cool and I wish I had actually noticed it at this stage um, uh, but like I said my eyesight's not the greatest uh, so I was focused on Venus and that was just kind of like a uh, in the corner of my vision. So the next shot that uh, follows that immediately, and these are all one second shots. Um, I took a blurry one on 6769, and uh, because I shook the camera, that's why it got blurry. Uh, 6770 is also a one second exposure, and you take a look at it, and it's like the purple lights went out, and there's, there's green lights all over it and uh, I don't know if it's turning or what it's doing but uh, that's also a pretty cool picture but it doesn't really give uh, definition and this was I guess about the time uh, I noticed it so uh, I moved over to the other side of the yard and I, to get the trees out of the way and I focused on it and so you can see when you zoom in on 6771, uh, this is the one second exposure. And you get right in there and there's no more purple and green. The whole thing is like uh, white and looks like uh, a bunch of panels or something. And then uh, 6772 is the really good clear 20 second exposure that shows a whole 
bunch of lights. Um, are they reflecting? Is it a satellite? No, I guarantee it's not a satellite because um, how I know that it was a stationary object because when you put uh, uh, these two pictures side by side, one that is a one second exposure and the next one that's a 20 second exposure, you can see the star trails of Venus right there. See, that's Venus, and then behind it, you've got this like little tiny dot. That's probably another star somewhere off in the distance because Venus does not have its own moon. So you can see um, with the rotation of the Earth that uh, when you expose a camera for 20 seconds on Venus, it's going to start creating a star trail. Whereas in the first exposure, there's no star trail. It's just blink you know, one second, you got a picture of Venus. Now, if you look at both of those pictures side by side of the object I was actually focused on, which was not Venus at that point, you see a craft. And I don't know what this craft is. Um, in the one second exposure on the left, um, and that square is there to show the focal point. That's what that red square is. Um, you can see that the, the craft is uh, smaller on the left in the one second exposure than it is on the right in the 20 second exposure which tells me that the 20 second exposure it came closer but was still not moving with the rotation of the earth so that it wasn't leaving a star trail so i took a picture of a stationary object that's why i didn't get a, a star trail and in the 20 second exposure which is the one i took to, immediately after the one second exposure it's obviously a little bit closer but then I didn't see it again um, I've examined these pictures over and over and I'm looking at stuff like uh, oh the the highlight the resolution what's what's behind it um, and the camera can do a few little tricks here and there it can uh, tell me if there's shadows and stuff like that. That's what the shadow alert, highlight alert. I take the shadow alert off and you can see all I've got there is black screen. Um, that's what's being shadowed. So there was nothing else in the picture. There's nothing holding it up. It's not a street lamp on a pedestal. Okay. Um, what... I think is fascinating about this is that um, no, or that I got lucky with is that uh, here's the trees in the daytime where I took the picture I know that right there in the center that's where uh, Venus was in the first picture and then up on the left you got that gap in the tree it just I was just lucky enough to get that thing in the gap and that's where it was when I took the picture. Then I, the, the, the first two pictures. Then I moved over to the other side of the yard so I didn't have trees in the way so I can get a picture of my star cluster. See, there it is um, peeking at me out the uh, corner of the tree. You can obviously see where the trees are when I put this filter on. Okay. So I know that in the uh, from the daytime shot that the object was not obscured. So I've got four really good pictures of this UFO. And I can prove to you where it is. Well, I mean, where it was when I took the picture, because you can see the uh, tree right there and the shadowing from the tree. So I want to take a look now at, uh, you know, how far away was this thing? Well, uh, here's a picture of the Goodyear blimp, okay? And I didn't take that picture, but somebody did. And mm, is it kind of the size of the Goodyear blimp from my picture? Well, when you zoom in on this guy's picture, the, the blimp's a uh, little bit bigger, but you know, you could say it's the same size. How far away is that blimp? I don't know. Um, quarter mile, half a mile, you know, he's not right under it. It'd be much bigger if, you, if it was 
much closer, obviously. So I can't tell you how close this was exactly, but there are ways to do calculations, which I looked up on the internet and I figured some stuff out. So um, there's pictures three and four side by side and then there's the blimp I'm trying to get it all in one frame and because the, the way the program works it doesn't like me to to look at everything at one shot on one screen so I gotta open things up in different screens but anyway now that I've got that to show you let's take a, a look at some of the calculations I found online um, the thing is, uh, I was able to use what's called the EXIF data inside the camera. Uh, f and that's a report that comes up on the screen. I'll show you, I'll show you one right here. And it tells me um, how, uh, how far away things were. How... Well, it doesn't tell me exactly how far things away are. I have to figure that out from the data inside the camera. So I got all of this information right here. Blow it up so you can see it. Uh, all these numbers, and I did the calculation by measuring the pixels of the photo and comparing it to other things that I know are how big they are or how far away they are. And uh, like this bird, for instance, I mean, you take a look at a bird and I took this picture from, uh, say 200 feet away. That's how big uh, a pelican is from 200 feet away. So was this thing a little tiny drone? Um, 200 feet away? No, it'd be as big as the pelican if it was. So therefore, it's much bigger and it's much farther away. I know it's not the size of a pelican at 200 feet. You know, it, if it was the size of a pelican at 1,000 feet, um, it'd be a pelican with a lot of lights on it. So that's not the case. Take a look now at some of these calculations. Um, now, I've got all these calculations listed below in the comments so that or the description. So you can read through them. You don't have to look at everything and pause this video over and over again. But what I figured out in the end, and I'm trying to work with a couple different uh, math magician authorities on it to figure out if I did this right. And this is why I'm putting this out there is I want other people to uh, take a look and see if your numbers concur with mine. And it, if this is proof enough that this object was about uh, 1.65 miles away, uh, or 8,700 feet, uh, about 10,000 feet high, and around 289 feet across. That's what I think it is. And just to compare, you know, oh, something that's at uh, 30,000 feet, here's a photo of an airplane, uh, a jet, flying directly overhead over my house, taken with the same camera, with the same zoom lens, uh, different time of day, of course, but that thing is um, not the same as this. It doesn't have the clarity in the picture uh, of the jet that I have of this object. So therefore, I uh, figure that this object is much, much closer. And if you take a look at the calculations uh, and follow the, uh, the calculation on photo stack exchange, work out its height in pixels, 102, divided by the image height in pixels, 3072, and multiply by the physical height of the sensor, 3625, and then you multiply that by the what we call the real height of the object, uh, uh, 
that would be the real height of the object times the focal length in millimeters times the image height in pixels 102 and if you take a close look at all my calculations I don't want to go through a bunch of numbers with you if you take a close look at all that you'll know that my photo is 282 feet tall 322 feet wide 72 dots per inch um, the size of the UFO in the photo uh, equates to something that I think is um, 2,956 meters away and 289 feet across. That's what it, that's what I come up with at the very end. Um, uh, while it measures to 10 feet across, what does 10 feet across look like at 974 feet high? So, you know, you looked at the pelican and a pelican's not 10 feet across, but if he was 974 feet up, uh, you wouldn't see him that clearly. So at 10 feet across, um, 9,760 9, feet, it would be a speck. So it's got to be bigger. And um, that's why I figure that m my calculations of it being 8,700 feet away and 9,700 feet high at 289 feet across is correct. That's how I got a picture of something up in the sky so far away so clearly. And that's why I think it's uh, as big as a football field. I'm not a video professional. I was out there to take pictures of the moon and Venus. And here's the one that I finally ended up with it, uh, a minute ago where well not a minute ago but um, in the end where after I took the picture of the UFO and moved over to the other side of the yard it was gone now you're wondering why didn't I get video of that UFO it's because I didn't know it was a UFO I thought it was a star cluster and I thought I was going to get a picture of Venus and the moon and the star cluster all together and then when I it, it disappeared and I said, ah, oh, well, I'm done for the night. I pulled everything in and I looked at my pictures the next day and I said, what? Okay, this is not a star cluster. And that's why I've made this video. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you uh, uh, come to your own conclusions and share your thoughts here in the video down below. I don't plan on any other UFO videos unless I see another UFO because uh, I'm no UFO expert, and I'm not out there hunting for them every night. Uh, just a guy who uh, carries a camera out once in a while, takes a few shots of birds and whatnot. And, well, here's my latest bird. Please, somebody tell me what it is. Thank you so much for watching. Be cool.